Just to give you some insights about our regular batches, I would like to take one problem of applied mathematics too. This is how we are going to conduct our regular batches. So just to give you a little piece of demonstration, let me just solve one problem from topic gamma functions. As we all are aware, there is a topic beta and gamma, gamma functions in our applied mathematics to syllabus. So let me consider gamma functions. Now if I just merely start with the topic, give you formula and start solving problem, there is no chance that you will understand importance of this topic. So let me do one thing before I start with this. This name is sufficient for you as of now. Let me do one thing. Let me give you an example. And why we need gamma functions? Let me tell you that. All of us are aware of integration. We have all seen this in 12th standard. Let me give you an integration like this. What if I ask you to solve this integration? Well, it's quite easy. U into V rule. So you apply U into V rule and you will get the answer. So in that case, this X is U as we follow the order of Lyapt. So AX is algebraic. This is exponential. So obviously algebraic comes first. I will apply U into V rule and get the answer. Well, you can solve that. I'm quite happy with that. Let me do one thing. Let me make it a bit difficult for you. Let me put a square there. Now you can solve. Yes, again, u into v rule. Again, you can apply u into v rule and can solve. Let me make it a bit difficult. More difficult. x cube. Well, again, you can solve. But you can understand that <coughs> as and when I increase the power, the number of UV rules that I'm going to use increases. If you use the standard formula of 12th standard for U into V rule, if you don't use generalized formula. So it becomes difficult. And what if I make it 300? Then as all engineering students say, option will hold the game. So they won't even attempt this. And that's the use of gamma function. To solve such integrations, I actually need a technique which will give me answer of this directly without applying u into v rule. That technique is given by gamma function which says an integration <coughs> 0 to infinity e raised to minus x x raised to n dx is nothing but gamma n plus 1. So whatever power of x is you simply have to put it over there. And that will be your answer. You actually don't need to apply u into v rule. But there is a notation that I have used which we are not familiar with. Gamma. This is not square root, this is gamma. So let me tell you about this now. If somebody says gamma n plus 1, it actually means n factorial. Gamma n plus 1 is a numeric value and it's nothing but n factorial. So if I have a number 5 over here, I simply have to Remove 1 and it becomes 4, 4 factorial. So it is n plus 1, n factorial. So reduce it by 1. Gamma 10, 9 factorial. Gamma 100, 99 factorial. But what if I give you a fraction, like say gamma 3 by 2? Then it becomes a bit difficult. Because gamma 3 by 2, if I remove 1, 3 by 2 minus 1 becomes 1 by 2, 1 by 2 factorial. That doesn't exist. So what I can do is, I can apply this formula. Gamma n plus 1 is n gamma n. So again you have to reduce it by 1, that's for sure, and write it like this. So if somebody asks you gamma phi by 2, then I can write it as gamma phi by 2. So phi by 2 minus 1 will give you 3 by 2. So it becomes 3 by 2 gamma 3 by 2. But still this gamma 3 by 2 is making a problem. What I can do is I can again apply the same formula. So I have gamma 3 by 2, reduce it by 1. So what do I get? I get 3 by 2 as it is. Gamma 3 by 2 will become 
What have we got? 3 by 2 minus 1, 1 by 2. 1 by 2, gamma 1 by 2. Now again if I apply the same process, 1 by 2 minus 1, I'll get a negative number. So that again is a problem. This gamma 1 by 2 is actually root pi. And that has obviously been obtained from this integration itself. So gamma 1 by 2, whenever we get, we'll write it as root pi. So this is 3 by 4 root pi. So this is how we evaluate this value. Gamma n, n plus 1, whatever you have, this is how you can calculate. That means whatever power of x is there, we can actually solve that integration. So I actually don't need u into v. But there are a few conditions to it. You must have limit of integration as 0 to infinity. <coughs> so just in case if it is not 0 to infinity and it is something else, then you have to think, what should I do so that it becomes 0 to infinity? And hence we have different types of problems in gamma functions. e raised to minus x, x raised to n dx. So the condition, you must have an exponential term. And you must have that exponential term like this, e raised to minus x. e raised to x won't work. I need e raised to minus x, a negative power. The next power can be anything. And that anything itself is going to give me my answer. So that's the beauty of gamma function. Gamma function is basically if you follow the blueprint of applied mathematics 2. So this is the first question that appears in exam from gamma functions. So just give me, uh, let me take a small problem the same type. If suppose I have to evaluate this integration, let me say x raised to a divided by a raised to x dx. Limit is 0 to infinity. Now that's a tempting part. 0 to infinity, then probably gamma function will help me. But there is again a problem. I need exponential. Uh, how do I get exponential? That's the big, big, big question mark. Do you see, see an exponential term over here? It's a raised to x. Yes, that's an exponential term, but I'm not interested in a raised to x. I want e raised to. So I can do one thing. If suppose this is my integration, I can write my integration as 0 to infinity. And we all are aware and this can be written as a raised to minus x, x raised to a dx. I have first taken it up because of this definition. Now a can be written as e raised to log a. Now this is something we have already seen in our previous academics. Any constant, if I have 2 raised to x, or let me forget x, 2 can be written as e raised to log 2. So basically this e and log cancels each other exponential, logarithmic, opposite of each other. So this is how I can write. So similarly, this a constant can be written as e raised to log a. And that's the benefit. If I have to solve it by gamma, or basically this question can be to solve it by gamma, I need e raised to, and this is how I'll get it. Now let me multiply with this with this, a simple property of indices, e raised to log a into minus x let me put minus over here looks more beautiful now let us go back to the definition any question from beta and gamma function you get you simply have to concentrate on definition koi bhi question hai, i simply need this now this is everything for me this is god e raised to minus x x raised to n so i need e raised to minus x only be it x, b, n, anything will work. Now let me change it by t. If I remove x and put t, doesn't matter. Definition remains same. I have simply changed the variable and that's allowed in definite integration. So e raised to minus t will work. What do I do to this so that it becomes in this form? This is something that doesn't work, no? What I need? e, I need. Minus, I need. Do you need this? No, you simply have to replace it by a single variable. And what can be better than t? Nothing else. Substitute. 
full gamma function is dependent on this concept only whatever you see look for the definition what can i do so that i get my definition and eventually that will give you an answer so i have some simply substituted log a into x as t x becomes t by log a and obviously dx will become dt by log a simple integration by substitution that we have been doing in 12 standard now whenever you change variable see i am changing variable i am going from x going to t domain so i obviously need to ch check the limit also that limit was previously for x pehle kon tha x abhi kon hai t what was limit for x 0 to infinity now let me check limit of t x x x x x x is here this is my substitution when i put x is 0 0 into this will give you 0 so that means t ka limit is also 0 When x is infinity, let me substitute infinity. Wow, infinity into anything is always infinity, so I don't need to bother about it. And that's what I wanted. See, the definition says zero to infinity. I want zero to infinity. Anything apart from zero to infinity is going to kill you. So we wanted zero to infinity. We are so lucky that we got zero to infinity. Wow. Let me change my integration now. Zero to infinity. Limit remains same. E raised to Minus log a into x is t looks better. See into now I need x raised to a, but x is what t by log a. So it is t by log a raised to a. Then I have dx that is also not working. Dx is dt by log a. Dt by log a. Oh, you must have noted this. So let me just. make space for this question so my integration is going to be see these are few unnecessary terms i don't need this and log a being a constant can be obviously taken outside so let me take this log a and to the power a outside this is log a means log a raised to 1 so eventually what goes out is log of A raised to a plus one. That's outside. Then I have integration zero to infinity. <coughs> e raised to minus t. E raised to a dt. And that's it. Our definition of gamma was this: zero to infinity. E raised to minus t. T raised to a dt. And that's nothing but gamma n plus one. See, you have got the same pattern. T raised to a. You simply have to. Write it as now gamma a plus one divided by log a raised to a plus one because it follows the definition. My answer is gamma a plus one. That's it. Now few people do this way. I mean they don't leave answer here. They write a plus one gamma as a factorial. Now I won't suggest you to do that because gamma n plus one can be written as n factorial only if n is an integer. Is this a an integer? No, we are not aware. A can be anything. Or I can form thousands of questions. So that's the beauty of mathematics too. And in our regular batches, we are going to conduct our classes the same way. In fact, the material we provide GQ, you can add a few questions to it. Suppose our GQ contains this question, you can make your own question. E is x is to three, three is to x, x is to four, four is to x. And add some exponential term to it. In fact, you will become an author one day. So that's that's the whole idea. I just wanted to solve one question and give you an insight, or I can say a demonstration on how our batches are conducted. The best part here at Vidya Lankar is that we don't only teach; we coach students. We don't teach or coach to clear for you to clear the paper. We believe. in complete knowledge and eventually if you have knowledge you will be able to clear any paper and so it's not only about clearing the paper it's also about scoring and more than that being aware of the subject to be aware of the knowledge that's what an engineering asks from you thank you see you all in our regular batches you can visit any of our centers 
all uh, batches for all these subjects SPA, Applied Mathematics 2 and Engineering Drawing. See you there. Thank you.